Hi everybody, this is uh, Philip Martin, and uh, welcome to On Film. Yeah, Audi is back with me today after a brief hiatus. Um, she she wanted to come up today. Uh, what am I going to talk about today? Well, it's Tuesday, and uh, to be absolutely honest, I'm not sure what the section's going to look like this week. We've got a, a couple of films that uh, I'm excited about that I haven't seen yet, that I will see shortly. The first is Kelly Reichardt's uh, First Cow, which may not sound very exciting to you because it's about an 18th century Oregon farmer who gets his first cow. But if you are a Kelly Reichardt fan, that might mean something to you, you know, because she's done some wonderful... Uh, low-key movies like Wendy and Lucy, um, and I'm a I'm a huge fan, so <laughs> we'll see. That's the sort of film that uh, appeals to, you know, film critics, people who see more than 10, 12 movies a year. Um, whether it appeals to a general audience, probably not, but in the environment we're in now where you are streaming and more or less picking and choosing what you want to pick, what you want to see, you know, you're not a slave to the um, marquee. You know, you've got more choices than what's up there on the on the board. <laughs> you know, I, I'm sure a few people will want to see it, and I'm sorry that it's apparently not going to be in local theaters because I think A24 has made it available for some theatrical release. I'm not sure exactly how that's working these days uh, because some of these things are being sent to drive-ins only and some of them are available in what they call virtual cinemas. And I think they're still having a little bit of a problem getting things into actual brick and mortar theaters. But yeah, anyway, First Cow is something I'm looking forward to. The other one is a IFC horror film called Relic that um, stars Emily Mortimer and was a big Sundance hit. And uh, I'm not normally in the mood for horror films. I'm not a huge horror fan. And the last two I can remember for liking were The Babadook and, uh, and The Witch. And, uh, you know, I'm not in for this. I'm not down for the scare of the week. But uh, this one looks interesting. It might be something worth seeing. The main film this week, which was really the main film last week, but I think I talked about it a little bit, uh, how I was anticipating seeing it, it was Hamilton, which I have to admit, I'm sort of um, almost embarrassed because I was a Hamilton agnostic. Uh, it wasn't that I didn't think it was a good show. I didn't think it was the sort of show that I was going to change my life. I'm not the sort of person whose life gets changed by a movie. Fair enough. I mean, most of us aren't. I mean, uh, there are movies I really love. There are movies that really uh, affected me. Hiroshima Monomore, The Searchers. Yeah. A lot of the early 70s stuff, the conversation, uh, Dog Day Afternoon, Bonnie and Clyde, that have had a, a big effect on me, and I, you know, I really cherish them. But as far as, you know, changing my life, I wouldn't say that there's ever been a film that did that. But Friday Afternoon, and the story, the backstory. The backstory is that um, for some reason... I'm not going to antagonize anybody. But for some reason, we have not gotten along very well with the folks at Disney for the past ah, 15 years. I don't know exactly why, but we've always had trouble getting, you know, screeners for their stuff, invitations to screenings, um, access to their people. They just don't really, and whether it's a, just a matter of market size or whether... It was, you know, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't like we were down on some list, you know, that they had in corporate headquarters that, you know, said, you know, bad list or anything like that. 
though knowing Disney, that's always a possibility. Uh, but for whatever reason, we didn't, we never get anything from them. We don't really have much of a relationship with them. We don't have a publicist that we can call uh, with regard to Disney product, whether it's a DVD or um, a movie or now the new streaming service. So last week, you know, actually I'm going to tell a story. Piers Marchand got a link to Hamilton from his local Disney rep. And if you don't understand the way we work here, Piers is based in Philadelphia. His mom is in Northwest Arkansas. And, you know, I don't know how many or many years ago he approached us about writing movie reviews for us. And at the time, we were starting to realize that we needed somebody who was based someplace other than Little Rock or Northwest Little Rock or Northwest Arkansas to write movie reviews because they just had stopped screening movies here in this market. And back in those days, most of the time, you went to a physical movie theater and sat in a seat and watched the movie with a crowd or with other critics, you know, and that's how you saw your movies in advance. Now, they stopped doing that here maybe 15 years ago, really, um, probably because we're a small market and because they don't realize that the market for the Arkansas Democrat Gazette is actually the whole state of Arkansas, which is why our newspaper is basically as big as the Boston Globe. But even though we're based in a, a, a market that may be the hundredth largest market in America. Okay. So, Piers gets this invitation to watch an advanced copy of Hamilton. Now, Piers is busy. Um, didn't want to do it, maybe. So, he sends it to me. And I, of course, can't use his link, but it's got a address for a Disney rep. And so I wrote the Disney rep on there and asked for my own link. And I got it. Too late for our purposes for last week. For our deadlines, movie style deadlines are interesting because we still kind of produce the paper in the traditional way that we lay it out. If you're looking at it on an iPad, you can see it looks like a newspaper. So, and we actually have a physical newspaper that we print every day too. And because of that, we have some lead time. We have deadlines that are a few days in advance of, uh, of our publication date. I don't know why that's hard to understand, but you know, a lot of people seem to have trouble grasping that. They can't call me on Friday morning or on Thursday morning and expect something to get in the newspaper on Friday. Now, the reporters, the A section, the Arkansas section, yeah, we can do that, but not in a, what we call a pre-printed style section. It's, our deadlines are, actually my deadlines are probably Wednesday afternoon, but practically they're Wednesday morning. By If I don't have anything, if I don't have something by 10 o'clock, it is likely not going in the newspaper. Arkansas Cinema Society, pay attention to that. I need something before Wednesday morning, if it's going to go in that week. Okay. They know that. <laughs> but anyway, I get the screener from Disney, and it comes in too late. It comes in Wednesday afternoon. And I debate, you know, maybe I should have done this. Maybe I should have rushed through it and written the review and then subbed it in and got it in. We couldn't have got it in a prominent place but we could have probably put it in the section. I could have, but that was solved for me because to, to watch the screener, I had to download an app and I downloaded the app and I didn't have a password for the app. And it said, if you don't have a password, you know, click the forgot password app. It'll take you to the page. You can make your own password. Well, there's no forgot password clicky on this thing. So rather than bother Disney again, because obviously it was going to be late, and obviously at that point I wasn't going to be able to get it in the newspaper anyway last week, I just let it go and I watched it, as we used to say, on the economy. When it became available for streaming um, on Friday, actually 2 a.m. Friday, I believe. So, you know, right after midnight Thursday, you could have watched it. Uh, we watched it. 
Karen and I sat down on Friday afternoon and, you know, we watched, uh, and so did you, Audi, uh, we watched uh, Hamilton. And we were thinking about it. We were thinking, you know, this is probably a good way to see Hamilton because it's a long, it's two hours and 40 minutes. We can pause it. We can come back to it tonight or tomorrow. You know, we don't have to watch it all in one sitting, which is a big deal for me. I don't really like, you know, watching movies that run over two hours. I will. And some of my favorite movies are, are on the longish side. But I, I, I get restless. I, like a lot of people. A man goes to the movies. I mean, you can't deny that, you know, I basically two hours of sitting there looking at a, a screen, I'm done. You know, I, I don't really want to commit more of my time to it. I want to go out and ride my bike. I want to go do this or do that. You know, play with the dogs or whatever. So we're thinking this is a great thing to watch Hamilton. And like I said, I've been a Hamilton agnostic. I didn't think it was bad. I did think that I would find a lot of fault in it. I did think that I would probably be bothered by these glaring historical inaccuracies. I did think that I would find the hip-hop sort of diluted and friendly up. And I wasn't sure, having heard, you know, the soundtrack in bits and pieces here and there over the past five years, which is really kind of interesting to think about because I still think of Hamilton as a relatively recent phenomenon, but it really debuted on Broadway in 2015, which was a whole different world than the one we're living in now. <laughs> so, you know, I had some preconceived notions, which you almost always do when you go see a film. When, when, when a critic goes see a movie, you basically can't divorce yourself from your prejudice. I mean, what you can do is you can acknowledge it and try to give it a fair hearing and try to, you know, give a movie a chance to work whatever magic it can work, you know? Does that make sense? You try to go in with an open mind, an open heart, hoping for, you know, fresh avenues of delight, even though you can't help but know certain things. You know you're familiar with the actors, with the director's previous work, so on, so on. I try not to read reviews of movies that I'm going to review before I review it. But, you know, sometimes that's not, that's not quite practical, you know, because there's a lot of stuff out there and you hear a lot of opinion. Okay. But I had a, my opinion of Hamilton before I saw it was, it's probably pretty good. But it's probably not something that I'm going to geek out over. I'm not a big musical person. You know, I mean, I've been in musicals. I was in Bye Bye Birdie. <laughs> I was in Shenandoah. I have done musicals myself. But I'm not a huge musical fan. I mean, there's some I like. Some I don't like. I mean, I really like Jesus Christ Superstar. You know, when you go back to my, my history, you know, I mean, it's sort of like, you know, but I'm not a big fan of Chicago, the, the film especially. I'm not, I can't think of many musicals that really have hit my sweet spot. So, that's where we are. We're coming in and we're watching it. And, you know what? It's a pretty magical show. It's really good. Lin-Manuel Miranda has done something really marvelous with the way he incorporates this sort of language of hip-hop within this sort of programmatic structure of the Broadway musical. <laughs> it's His lyrics aren't Sondheim-ish, but there's something about the show that is very Sondheim-ish. And it's also got these wonderful, you know, nods to current contemporary 
you know, wrap it. It's beautifully performed. I mean, these guys are all really good at it. And they can sing. And they can act. And then this... Christopher Groff comes out as King George III. And, and you can't get this experience in a theater unless maybe you're in the first row. But you can see this pancaked visage and this deadpan, kind of vicious, spit-inflected reading of this kind of beautiful, almost Herman's Hermit's, Herman's Hermit's type ballad, uh, You'll Be Back, you know. And I was hooked by the time that George III comes out there. And I was really curious what my wife's reaction was going to be. And we got to the intermission, which is right in the middle. You know, it's an hour and 20 minutes in. And they have like this little card comes up on the screen and it starts counting. It says intermission. It starts counting down from, from 60 seconds. So we paused it and we went across the street, took the dogs and spent maybe 15 minutes. You know, it's just kind of like you would in a regular theater intermission. It took 15 minutes to run around and, you know, let Audi smoke a cigarette. And uh, then we came back and watched that sucker. And there wasn't any doubt that we were going to do that. It was not, not putting the leftovers up and waiting for, you know, later to heat them up and eat them again or anything like that. Even though that's a perfectly fine way, perfectly viable way, I think, of watching, you know, a movie now. I mean, we did that with The Irishman, and I don't think it uh, hurt us one bit. I immensely enjoyed The Irishman, but I didn't consume it all at once. You know, it was too much cake. Hamilton is not really too much cake. It is a, a very powerful. It surprised me how powerful and moving it was. I know, I, I like to think I know a little bit about Alexander Hamilton, the historical Alexander Hamilton. I went back and I looked, and he's the founding father that, I quote most of the time, he never said, or he may have said, the people, your people, sir, is a beast. He never committed that to writing. But that was his general attitude. <laughs> he was this, you know, elitist. He was up from nothing, uh, a bastard uh, from uh, St. Kitts, who immigrated into the United States as the, as usual, as you, some of you probably already know this because you've seen Hamilton. A lot of my friends saw Hamilton in New York on Broadway and paid $800 or so to see it. And I thought that was excessive. Now I think that, boy, they were onto something. I'm glad I didn't pay $800 to see this, but even so, I mean, it's, this is, this is an American moment and it's, um, uh, really good to have right now, you know, <laughs> in this uncertain hour when we have not a whole lot of common experiences now. We're all shuttered away in our own little houses and we all kind of creep out and do this and that kind of furtively with our mask on. You know, um, but this is something that we basically are doing together. You know, everybody who has Disney Plus anyway is watching Hamilton this week or last week. So I thought it was worth writing about, and I wrote about it for for this for for this section. And I probably gave away a lot of what I wrote just now if you listen to me talk, but. I'd rather you read it than listen to it, <laughs> than listen to me rabber. Um, so I'm just, I guess I was humbled, and I really am. It, it's sort of funny because I, I remember Bill Simmons, the uh, sports guy who now has the ringer where he does podcasts and stuff like that. And 
He wasn't on to The Sopranos, or no, it wasn't Sopranos, it was The Wire. He wasn't on to The Wire for a long time, long after it stopped actually running new uh, episodes. And then he got into The Wire, and all of a sudden it became like the greatest TV show ever, and it may well be the greatest TV show ever. I really like The Wire, too. But it, it's that I don't want to come across as... You know, like like a recent convert. Though I am a recent convert because I really never considered spending a lot of money to go see Hamilton. I would have probably go see it when it came to Little Rock. When the touring show came, I would probably have gone see it. I would have probably watched this movie even if it had come out, you know, in theaters and I hadn't written about it or anything. I probably would have eventually seen it. It would have been part of my... I know, professional um, continuing education. But man, I really, really like this. And it really touched me in a weird way. I mean, it's sort of like, I can't even tell you why, but I was choked up at the end. And part of that has something to do with the, you know, individual story of Hamilton, who, like I said, I know a little bit about. And I kind of admire his you know, sort of coolness <laughs> and the way he sort of balanced this sort of Jeffersonian, you know, fervor. And, uh, you know, even though, you know, he probably was a bit of a jerk, they probably all were, you know, all those founding father dudes. They all had their foibles. And I think that's one of the reasons we probably shouldn't put up statues of people, but maybe statues to ideas and ideals, because nobody can withstand the, you know, the weight of history on your shoulders. <laughs> Hamilton sure couldn't. Aaron Burr sure couldn't. Thomas Jefferson probably can't. Even George Washington, you know, there are cracks there. So if when people pull down statues. I'm not exactly sympathetic, but maybe I understand a little bit. And maybe I think that most of those statues shouldn't have been put up in the first place. I would rather do something gentler like explain them, put them in a place where we can look at them later and uh, coolly assess what our history has been. But I don't think we're I don't think we're made for that. I think we're, you know, too emotional. Too driven by wishfulness. We want heroes and we'll manufacture them out of base materials if need be. And you know, I think that obscures the fact that some heroes are manufactured out of base materials, obscures the very real virtues of some of these flawed people who maybe shouldn't be made into statues, but, you know, still had real virtues and real good ideas. Hamilton? Well, maybe somebody should put up a statue of Lin-Manuel Miranda. Because <laughs> it's, it's a real work. It, it does what art's supposed to do. And it can bring you together. It will make you, it will hurt you, and it will uplift you. And that's about the best we can hope for, isn't it? I mean, it feels real. It feels real in that, you know, it doesn't feel cheap or forced. So, that's my recommendation for this week. See Hamilton if you haven't seen it. And if you have seen it, well, maybe you have opinions on it. You can, you can let me know about that. That'd be fine. Let Audie know. Audie's seen Hamilton. What'd you think? She liked it. She liked it. Yeah. She liked it. She likes Hamilton. She likes ice cream. Yeah. Um, that's about it for this week. We got a 
good section, I hope. If everything comes through, we'll have a really good section. Oh, I should say that as of last, as of June 30th, movie style turned 20 years old. So we've had this section for 20 years. We've had the movie reviews for longer than that. We've had this section for 20 years. So happy ber belated birthday to us. And uh, take care and... We will someday see you at the movies. I might be there again this weekend. You never know.